What is up guys, today we're going to be focusing on a Ryzen PvP Warlock Chaos Reach build that I believe will have a great place for the aggressive players and those who like to clean up fast and quickly and pretty much dominate wherever they go. Utilising the Middle Dream Stormcaller and the new Berserker mod, I'll show you how you can continuously craft a 2 tapping machine via a 120 hand cannon and have a constant flow of super energy available, so you can activate the Berserker mod whenever and repeat it as necessary. Since Stasis has become rampant in game, this build will allow you to now down such players and easily counter their moves before they even have a chance to react. Very easy setup that everyone can create, but not easy for everyone to use. But with the changes to 120s making them much easier to handle and the synergy of the build allowing constant damage uptime, I believe you'll be able to make full use of the build right here and then. So for the subclass, we will be using the Chaos Reach tree and using every perk within the tree to make the build flow when using our mods and perk as we go. To start things off, let's take a look at the Ionic Trace perk, the number one perk that we'll be using quite a lot within the build. This perk here will produce a small but traceable arc trace that goes to you upon kills or assist. This here will provide a small boost to your abilities but also your super as well, so while you're naturally playing, this perk will always be active and benefit you on a large scale. Add in the ability to use super, melee or grenade centric mods that can further boost your abilities and you'll pretty much have your abilities in super freely available as long as you collect said traces. It also permits you to use all of your abilities more often since any kill or assist will affect all of your abilities. This means perks such as ball lightning and pulse wave will be more frequent in your loadout and allow your hand cannon to be more deadlier without any other mod being active, which is a great feature for the subclass tree. Chaos Reach now is as it's described, destroy everything and anyone within your radius with your Kamiyame Blast with its one and done ability. What makes this super unique to others is its ability to cancel mid super and allow users to reserve their super energy for another time. Compared to the other two arc subclasses, this can make using the Berserker mod more interesting to interact with, since you can go get a kill with said super, get a damage buff, build up super again via the Ionic Trace and super mods and repeat. That's pretty much the format the build will follow, but it's better if you see it in action first before you get a good understanding of it before going ahead and testing it out. For grenades, I would recommend you use the Pulse or Storm grenades. Both have great damage and radius and are perfect against group players. They're also great for weakening players so you can finish with your primary or secondary quickly, or for shutting down certain lanes, which would be suitable for a 3v3 content. For the weapons, as you're going to be playing PvP quite a lot, you're going to need a, at least a 120 hand cannon and a shotgun that you can lie on within a pinch. Within my primary slot, I've chosen to use the Steady Hand with Zen Moment and Swashbuckler, with a Handling Masterwork, and with the 120 changes and this ability to roll with Swashbuckler, this has become the current meta that a lot of players are currently using if you didn't manage to get the True Prophecy hand cannon. With the build and mod in mind, using a 120 is best example of maximizing the mod to its fullest potential because of how easy it can become to turn your weapon from a 3 hit to a simple 2 hit within its effective range. This for the PvP side of things makes taking on players a hell of a lot more easier as you can miss a follow up shot for example and still recover if the bonuses of the mod or your damage perks are still active. Of course you don't need to strictly use 120 hand cannon to pull this off as any weapon of your choice is fine for you to go ahead and pick, but as the build is built around being aggressive once you get the Berserker mod going, it makes sense to pick them out of all things. Now of course if you don't have this hand cannon, then there is the Moon Now Lullaby hand cannon which is a really good weapon to use for PvP only, but is sadly sunset. But you can freely farm for it for infinite amount of times and outside the Trials and Iron Banner is still usable. For our secondary, I have chosen to use the 7th Cell Shotgun with Quid Draw and Vorpal Weapon. This role is suitable for shutting down super users with his ability to be drawn out quickly and the Vorpal Weapon extra boost in damage against super users is also great when up against similar aggressive players or for shutting down stasis users mid action. But with this combo it won't be enough to always one shot most super users depending on what their health is or what their resilience stands at. If you don't have the Fell Winters then this is the second best weapon to have until something stronger and better comes along in the following seasons. For Heavy, I've chosen to use the 7th Self Sword with Clown Cartridge and Vorpal Weapon and once again, suitable for taking out super users within a few hits and when I managed to get some ammo for it. Great weapon to have in the long run and as a backup 
and I would say if you manage to get one with the Fire Online perk, which increases the amount of damage you do against players depending on how many of your teammates are alive and around you, it's definitely worth investing for in PvP. For the stats, you're going to want to try and aim your stats into the intellect area or the recovery area as much as you can, but to be honest, just spreading all your stats out to around the 50 to 60 level is also very reasonable depending on what you value the most and how much stat value your armor provides. I chose to go with the latter option as I knew that if my stats were all spread out, then I have a better chance of survival and I won't need to try and fix a stat area that may have gone wrong. Having recovery at 60 is something I saw as most important as I can utilize the empowering lift and get increased damage while also allowing me to recover my health much quicker when low. Although my intellect stat is low, this can be easily topped up with a master weapon and supers for my allies. Also, with the Geomag in stock, I plan to utilize it to top up my buff when I get near the 80 to 90% of my super ready. This here is important as the build will rely on using your super in short bursts and not fully use it all at once. When done in practice, you won't need to invest so much into your intellect stat at all. The rest of your stats should stay in the 50 section so you get the best of both worlds and always stay tip top. Armor will need to be able to support the charge with light mods and ideally the high energy fire mods when we don't have any other damage buffs coming from anywhere else. You're also going to need some slots available to slot in the hand cannon mods to increase accuracy and aim. And the most important part is that you need to have a 6 slot class armor piece to place in the berserker mod. Your geomags do not need a specific affinity to use unless you have a mod you would like to slot it in. Now, here are the mods we are currently using and how they generally benefit the build overall. So for head, we have recovery and hand cannon targeting mod. Arm, we have mine resilience, bolstering destination, focusing strike and taking charge mod. Chest, we have discipline, concussive dampener, unflinching hand cannon aim and high energy fire mod. Leg, we have recovery, installation and absolution mod. Bond, we have distribution and berserker mod. Now, the following build has a lot going for it, which can be narrowed down into simple actions as to what's going to be doing what. In the current clips, you've seen the build requires you to play within a close to mid range encounter and play aggressive so you can get your super up and running and then steamroll from there, although this may be 50 50 at times. Your subclass, like I mentioned earlier, will be kicking in whenever you get a kill or assist, which will refill your abilities and supers via the Ionic Trace perk. And this really is handy when you stick near teammates as they can weaken others and you can just move in for the kill or just be present when it does activate. When injured, the pulse rate perk will also activate and provide a movement speed bonus and a reload speed bonus which is handy for either backing off if you don't have enough time to reload or any ammo left or you can use it to challenge others considering that now your hand cannon with slow reload has been extraordinarily improved upon with a quicker reload cooldown. But only for a short duration. But if you go down this path, do be sure to move quickly before the timer goes off. Now, as we casually net kills and assists, we should be heading into the super activation phase. I've decided that using the Geomag stabilizers are a perfect match for topping off our super when it's near 80%, since we don't need to rely on any more kills from there. This will allow you to play a bit more aggressive as you can use your super for a bit, get a kill, produce orbs of power, get back to 80% again and repeat, and the combo really does show how truly magnificent the build really is when timed correctly, and also allows you to create a super train that your allies can join in on. This will allow us to activate the berserker mod, and if you're not familiar with what the mod does, basically after a super kill you can get a damage buff depending on how many kills you get with it, and the more kills you get, the longer perk will last. You get a 25% damage buff that can last from 12 seconds to a full minute, and it increases as well and it's enough for you to two-tap everyone and get your super back one after another. If you have a damage perk on said weapon, they can also stack on it as well, which is a overkill but still viable against super users. It's a very nutty build in the right hands and really popular PvP players like for example Frostbolt and Kami, who are used to mixing and matching, will be able to mop up players like it's nothing even though they can do that anyways. The downside to using such a build at the moment is how strong the stasis players are, you can close the gap on you much more faster and freeze you the moment you even get a chance to pop your super. This is a very 50-50 scenario that not everyone can counter on you, so you need to make sure you understand the map you're on and learn when to back off if you're out in open for longer than needed. The build is strong but is not super strong against a stasis player who knows what they're doing and all they really need to simply do is just freeze you for it to be game over. 
you also have to remember, as you're using the 120 hand cannon to pull this off, it will react much slower than any other hand cannon in game. So you will need to make sure you have cover to break away to, and you will need to make sure you take your time with each of your shots, so you can perfect your aim, although this may vary from player to player. You also have to remember, as you're using the 120 hand cannons to pull this off, it will react much slower than any other hand cannon in game, so you will need to make sure you have cover to break away to, and you will need to make sure you take your time with each of your shots, so you can perfect your aim, although this may vary from player to player. I would highly recommend you give this build a try since the buff to 120s have been a welcoming addition to the game and made them more versatile in PvP than ever before. And the synergy between Chaos Reach and Berserker is nothing to sleep on when jeweled correctly. So if you enjoyed the video, then do please leave a like and a sub and also follow me on Twitter to keep up to date with Destiny content if you dig that type of stuff. Link is down below. But once again, thanks for stopping by. I'll see you all in the next one.